And with that, we're into champion select. So, nerve up against Epsilon. Alrighty, so what we're going to have in terms of bans. Who do you need to target? Is there anything specific on these two teams? <laughs> Already in Seoul, <laughs> aim for the caps. It's like, yeah, oh, we just man. saw the panic hold clip. Uh, yeah, get that one so, away Oh, yeah, here. guys, no, wait. We should definitely ban this. Yeah, wait. we can't do that anymore. To um, be fair, caps, uh, definitely one of his comfort picks. Having a look, yeah. it is something that he's been playing a lot of, and clearly Epsilon have said, no, 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 no. We'll be having <laughs> we'll none of that. that. None of that. No. Um, so, at least going to be taken off the table as well. A lot of early pressure for Memento. That does seem to be the jungle style that he's most comfortable on. We have seen him bring out the Graves as well, and he hasn't had the same sort of success. So, right. Epsilon. Um, actually, it surprises me. Nerve taking that one away from Memento. Just realized. Yeah. Um, Typically, that is his go-to. Oh, Cairo, of course, that is also one of his jungle picks. Yes, indeed. So. Nidalee, uh, Elise, really big for Kirei. And Ash will be banned towards Woolite, which is interesting. Actually, would have banned more mobile champions for him. And these bans are coming out so fast. Iray, of course, aimed at Wicked, has been a staple for him for like the last five years. Uh, Vladimir, also because Vladimir. And Nidalee would be first pick for Memento. So picking this high-priority jungler, what does that leave Kirei with? Uh, we have a couple of options here, actually, because Bard is still available. Very strong support in the bottom yeah. lane. Braum as well. Um, just Karma's have a look. open. Some of the, was banned early yeah, you don't need series. to prioritize a jungler right now simply because Nidalee has already been taken off the table. You you could look to pick up a mid, one of the Azirs or Victors. Both yeah. very strong right now, both very safe picks if you just want to pick something up early. Uh, want to save one of your later rotations. Or you could just go for the AD carry with Jin taken off the table. Mm. You have to think of what's the next baby, best AD carry we've seen. Ezreal rising in power, Caitlyn is definitely still a power pick. Um, but, oh, how could we forget about Karma? Yeah. <laughs> no, we can't, because Karma, I mean, like, even better on this patch, it was already, like, a high-priority pick, and now it's just even better, so why not just pick it up early rotation? Um, no, put a lot of priority onto trying to ban Warlight stuff away, um, banning both the Jin and the Ash, leaving Caitlyn open and Karma open, which aren't even, like, bad picks. They're, like, really good picks, so... Yeah, yeah. it's just they really did not want him to be on these longer range champions with like longer range engage, I guess. It's interesting from Nerf because what they've done is they wanted to take Kyrie off of something comfort. So you already mentioned earlier on, Elise and Nidalee, yeah. staple for Kyrie, something that he's always gone for. Um, and so they've prioritized picking that one because they banned two AD carries. And now it makes you wonder, Nerf had to have expected the early Caitlyn rotation coming out from the side of Epsilon. So mm. they must have something in store for it. The fact that they've gone for the Braum suggests, okay, we're going to go for a lane swap because <laughs> you're not going to win up against the Karma, um, Karma Caitlyn lane. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to have to get out of that 2v2. So I wouldn't be su surprised to see something that scales as equally as well. Maybe go for that late game uh, Lucian build that we've been seeing recently. Yeah. Or you could go for something like the, the blue build, Azriel. It yeah. both works quite nicely towards the mid lane. That'd be absolutely fine. And Shen also picked up for Nerve, uh, most likely going to the top lane. I mean, where else are you going to play the Shen? Uh, Support. Just Support maybe, but we haven't seen Shen support in such a long time. No, when no, he no. came back, actually still not, no. We no. was really just like, yeah, top lane and hold Shen. You can play him jungle, I just wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, I mean, he does extra damage to monsters. Um, but yeah, his, <laughs> his wig is still bad. Um, on the opposite side, Rumble, again, really just coming back. We've seen a lot of Rumble recently, in fact. And Rek'Sai for the jungle, so there's Kirei's next choice. Makes sense, I mean, that's generally where Kirei will go from there. Um, if both of those picks are taken off the board for him. Yep. So. Yep. I mean, the rumble makes a lot of sense into the Shen. So you can clearly see Epsilon saying, all right, we have definitely want standard lanes because mm. rumble really good at pulling around the Shen early on. Uh, his Spirit's Refuge is not going to help him very much against that flame spitter thrower thingy. Mm -hmm. um, and the 2v2 in the bottom lane, Caitlyn Karma, so devastating to have to play against. The, the long range, the poke, the consistent oh. harass, very obnoxious to have to deal with. And then, of course, you've got Kyrie on top of this jungle Rek'Sai, which enables him to put this early pressure down. So Epsilon going to go for standard lanes, going to go for that early advantage and sort of build their lead from there. And Kindred, not Kindred, Syndra in the mid lane, <laughs> basically the same champion. Uh, Caps bringing out these random champions, right. really cool to see, actually. Well, no, Ica played this uh, in previous weeks. That's true. We series, have seen so. Syndra recently, yeah, yeah, and Power yeah, of Evil even brought it up yeah. recently as well, one of his uh, old special picks. He runs TP, it's going to tilt me a little bit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we'll see if he does. I, I have, have a bit of a pet hate with TP and mages, but mm. I will only get into that if it, he decides to go for it. Last pick, Varus. Interesting. Is Varus good into Syndra? Is that a thing? Because it's good into Azir. I mean, That's one of the reasons usually it's picked. So the thing about Syndra is she used to be really dominant in the laning phase mm. because she had like crazy high base stats and then she would scale really well. Right. They nerfed the base values, but her scaling's still pretty good, so her laning phase isn't as oppressive, meaning Varus can get through the laning phase. And because Syndra is quite a low bar mate, a low mobility mage, 
it's not that hard to land the poke if it's just becoming this sort of standoff. Mm. And also, the chains of corruption become easier to land, so you can set up for laning ganks. Yep. However, if you're both at level 6, and it is Varus versus Syndra, there is not a chance in hell that Varus will win. <laughs> um, because, I mean, that's what Syndra does. She is a burst mage that solely focuses on shutting down a single target. So when you look at the composition that they've drafted with the uh, Nidalee, Syndra, and the Ezreal, you've actually got a pretty strong poke slash pick comp coming out from the side of... Uh, uh, of nerve, and I actually think this is, could be quite interesting because you've got a lot of early skirmishing potential, a lot of global pressure as well from the Shen. Yep. You can set up for the 1 4. A lot of options here for Nerve. Indeed. So let's hit those hashtags hashtag NRV win or EPS win as we get into game and see what you guys are thinking at home. But we are into our second series of the ga game here. The second series of the day. Wow, I can't even English anymore. Deficio just sucked the life out of me. It was it's just like turned me friend, into. Uh, I can compensate for <laughs> all your lacking English. We're going to have a jolly good show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so get on Twitter and send those hashtags in, because this is going to be a one jaunty ride. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. Now we sound different. There I sound are. like a northerner, and you sound like a southerner. Spectacular. Good stuff. I wonder if anyone actually speaks like that anymore. Probably not. Uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? This is my normal talking voice. This is how I always sound in the office. <laughs> That's a lie. Um, <laughs> so, Epsilon, they're just going to space out. Well, I mean, like, you know, fan out, not like just space out, just like walk up to the riff and just like dream. Fan out, gents. We're yep. going for the V strategy. The, v <laughs> the flying V. You know, it'd actually be great if like formations were a thing in League of Legends where you would like put your tank in front and then like, you know, just spearhead the assault. We have assault. front line, back line. That's, that's yeah, but they're just kind of like a blob of people. They're not really like, you know, a blob forming, of forming formations. Oh, you mean like the... The star, so that you yeah. have like them at five different points, yeah. and then they're all attacking from or different like angles. The turtle. The t <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose you could do that with a Shen, couldn't you? Yeah. Just have Nidalee be your frontline tank, and then you put the Shen on top, and then a Braum jumps in front of him. Exactly. And then you have the little arms, the little waddling arms of Ezreal and Syndra side <laughs> by side. <laughs> that that was not the turtle I was thinking. I was thinking of like the Roman wolf formation, not. Literally well, a I turtle. <laughs> 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 nah, my version's better. Um, I do agree. It's a shame, though. Everyone missed my little animation. Yeah. I'm sure... No, I would love that as a gif, actually. <laughs> um, we have Australian lanes, so we don't have a lane swap, so we actually have stuff right. to talk about here. Let's actually fantastic. talk about the... Uh, let's talk about the lanes. Epsilon, they wanted the standard two versus two because of how good Rumble is into the Shen early on and because of how oppressive this Caitlyn and Karma lane can be. Mm. So things are going to work out very nicely early on for Epsilon, but fortunately... For Nerve, they have the Nidalee, who's great at setting up these early ganks. Typically, if you get even a slight lead up against the Rek'Sai, there's very little that he can do to match the sort of pressure that the Nidalee can put out. So we'll have to keep our eyes on momentum where he decides to path. It looks like so far he's just prioritizing on that jungle clear, going for that early farm style that we do see a lot of Nidalees do. And he's basically telling his laners for the time being, you guys are just going to have to suck this one up. Yeah. Memento has generally been um, a pretty solid jungler. I think he's been one of the shining lights on Nerf, if anything else. So maybe he can get in uh, Key Ray's grill and just uh, mess him up and get some early pressure for his team. Or just farm. Maybe maybe that's what he'll do too. Key Ray going through his jungle. Um, yeah, everything pretty standard for the junglers right now. What other lanes do we have that we haven't talked about? Mid lane, Caps and, uh, and Cosqus. So. Yeah, Cap's bringing uh, the Syndra with us here. Well, as you mentioned, Ike has already played it in Challenger. Paravi will play it in LCS. More people have played it around the world, but I'd be here forever if I was listing off everyone. <laughs> uh, in this composition particularly, I think that the you can get away with running the Syndra simply because you have the Shen and the Braum, so there's a very solid front line for the Syndra to sit behind. And to, she has quite long range, but positioning is very important for her, and she has to be very mindful of the of the pick potential of that virus and the potential rumble ult to cut off her escape. Mm. So having flash is very important on these low mobility mages, especially for setting up early ganks. And speaking of early ganks, yeah, that's Memento coming to the bot lane. That was an, that was an ambitious javelin. He was like, I can thread the needle through these many minions and hit this rumble. Um, that didn't work out, surprisingly enough. <laughs> and then he'll just walk away. It did. So Top Nukes lock, potentially two going for the two. all in, but... Well, he needs the third proc or the fourth proc onto Warlight. He gets it. Nuxet is going to follow after as well. There's the Ignite coming down. Warlight is very low, but the heal coming down from Nuxet. They may have just heal baits them. Reverse heal bait. And everyone's going to back away. Ooh, very hectic. A lot of early skirmishing going across the map. And for Nerve, this is somewhat what they want with their composition. But you have to remember with the 2v2 that Nerve have, 
have a lot of threat in terms of the all-in. They were able to burn both the ig uh, the exhaust and the heal from uh, Epsilon, but Nerve had to invest those same resources to get that trade. So no real advantage gain in the bottom lane. And farm is relatively even, so no, they just want to put a bit of pressure down so that it's not constantly them being forced under the turret yep. and losing all that farm to this Caitlyn and Karma, which I actually quite like from Nerve, and nice to see Upset not being too afraid of all the poke that he's sustaining. Yeah, Nerve have uh, definitely transformed into a, a different team with the addition of those three different players coming in, Upset and Slot. I don't agree with that, Pulse. I still Why feel not, like Vettius? they're still very similar to how they were before. They, they still have this strange decision-making tree. They they don't properly know how to assign lanes efficiently. Uh -huh. And even with the addition of these players, it just feels like maybe mechanically, maybe as a unit, they're a little bit more together, but they, yeah. they still show a lot of this, a lot of challenger team mistakes. I don't disagree with you, Vedius, but I think they all go down together now. <laughs> like they, they, they're all on the same page. It's like, this is probably a bad play, but we're all gonna commit to it. Whereas before they were kind of all over the place. Um, that actually doesn't sound like they improved at all, but I do feel like Nerve <laughs> are better, and I think last, week, last week's results uh, showed that, at least from what we saw from them. Mid lane, trade, level 6, punish from Kozq will not result in the kill, but it's really difficult for Syndra to deal with, especially not being level 6 Caps himself. Um, so this is one of the things about the matchup, the fact that Caps uh, has to use his mana to clear a lot of the waves, whereas Koski with his basic attacks is actually very efficient at last hitting and shoving up, and he's also decided to go for the Corrupting Potion, so he has a little bit more sustain as well, which helps him a lot. Uh, but And that's going to force Caps underneath the turret, and you notice there that Koski got the early level 6, which he tried to abuse, but unfortunately, because he was standing still and walking to Caps in a straight line, that made it very easy for Caps to land that stun. So, overall, good play, but Koski uh -oh. eating the spear. Not the place to be window shopping. And uh, it's going to be fine. So, actually deals a lot of damage towards him, but did burn his uh, his ghost. So, yeah. One less it was uh, just Defcon 1. He was like, up, oh, just need to burn the ghost here. Didn't have to uh, raise the Defcon and go for the flash. And look at this. Nerve sending their bottom lane to the other side of the map now to try and help Wicked set up the siege. Uh, they also have Nidalee hanging around the side to try and push down this turret, but. Fortunately for Epsilon, they return to base at just the right time so that now their bottom lane can meet Nerve. And I imagine that Nerve aren't really going to get many advances off the back of this. And this is actually pretty good for Satorius because he's going to be able to pick up all this farm. He's not going to be sharing it with all these other members, whereas Upset and Wicked now have to divide their resources. And you mm. can see that because Warlight has been very good in terms of putting Harass down in the 2v2 and been just really good at wave management, he's got a pretty significant farm advantage in the bottom lane. And uh, farm advantage mid lane as well. It was funny because Koski was pushing in Caps constantly, but it seemed from just that one gank it forced Koski back to base, and then uh, Caps was able to stick around and pick up a fairly hefty lead. Uh, second round of buffs have spawned. It's seven minutes into the game, so Memento will pick that one up. And uh, doing a decent amount of farming in this game. He is very much ahead of Kirei. I mean, there's no real catching up to it, so a Nidley as a Rek'Sai. Ooh, Shennel in the bottom lane. The flash forwards from Upset coming in here onto Noxiac, and he is definitely going to get stunned up, and a taunt followed up by Wicked. It will be first blood over to Upset. Didn't flash, used Arcane Shift, and he is good to go. Really good execution coming out from Nerve. Not a massive fan of the fact that Wicked initially teleported top after the lane swap to try and get a bit of a tempo advantage in the top half of the map. Then he used his ultimate bottom. Uh, I feel like <laughs> if they were going to set up that play, there was no need for Wicked to use his TP top because now he's actually going to lose a lot of farm over to Satorius. But still, nice execution overall coming out from the bottom lane of Nerve. They forced the flash out of Noxiac and he, Wicked held on to his taunt for long enough to make sure that he was able to land that crowd control. That enabled Nerve to pick up the kill and now Wallite, he's struggling a little bit underneath this pressure and he's being forced underneath his turret. Yeah. Still farming away. Top lane Satorius. He just kind of wandered down river and will find Wicked and Memento for an easy kill for Nidalee. That was a little too easy. Didn't see the setup to that one, but uh, yeah, unlucky Satorius. Ah, so he had a pink ward and he actually wanted to clear away uh, Nerves wards in the river. Ends up getting punished. Oh, no. Warlight. Warlight. Nukes a lot. It's right on top of him. No uh, Noxiac's going to try and save him. Oh, oh no! so close, But he's stared <laughs> underneath the tower. Noxiac, he misses the Q, though, and won't pick up the kill. But Kira is there to secure it. Upset. He just has to go in. And Kira, oh, uh, here comes the land shark. Oh, Prey Seeker for the kill. 
I can't believe that just happened. Ah, that was awful, Pulse. That was, was quite bad. <laughs> that was so bad on so many levels. <laughs> break I really down hope for we me, get Phineas. it. Well, we, when we get the replay, I will properly break okay. down as to why so many things here's went your wrong. Chance. Right. So oh, here's uh, the we're going to get a replay of what's happening in the top lane. So Satorius, he actually just walked into the enemy jungle to get that deep port oh. down, which you can see on the minimap. But because of all the vision in the river, they could see what was happening for Nerve. And now observers, I would very much like you to give me a replay of what happened down in the bottom lane, mm -hmm. so we can properly dice that high levels challenge of play. We can uh, CSI uh, what happened, yes. But uh, in all seriousness, so far for Nerves, this is actually very good in terms of the early game because Whoop. of how strong EPS's laners are. Um, typically, you would expect things to be going in Epsilon's favor, and that's typically what they want with the draft that they've decided to go for. And the fact that Nerve are able to just catch Epsilon out of position is great for them. So let's have a look at this. Just look at the mana difference first. Epsilon, uh, Woolite, sorry, eating that Q means that he ends up taking a lot of damage that he doesn't want to. Upset just barely on the rage, has to use the heal to stand underneath the turret. The fact that Noxiac also missed his Q when Upset was standing still could have easily netted himself a kill. Yeah, um, he was predicting him. He was leading him, of course. It's one of those things where, like, if, you, um, if you're if you a high elo player and you, you're you playing in the low... Or you're playing a normal game yeah. and you expect people to juke your... <laughs> 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 but they don't. And so you miss everything yep. because they refuse to walk into your abilities. It's, mm -hmm. it's like next-level mind games. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, uh... To rise, just play worse, <laughs> and then it's all good. But uh, yeah, sometimes you can mind game people by just like standing still, and because uh, if if you're going from side to side, which is the typical thing, like you constantly want to be clicking, you want to go like left to right, and be like, which way is he gonna go? But then if you just stand still and wait for the skill shot to come out, and then turn as the skill shot comes out, sometimes it's actually easier to dodge. So the, the, dodge the best mechanics, one is when um, you're running in a straight line to like avoid the. Um like the hook or something, yeah. and then people expect you to turn back into the hook, but you just keep walking in a straight <laughs> line, and they've just thrown their spear in completely the wrong direction, and you're just like, yeah, yep. get mind-gamed. Anyway, mind-gamed. Having a look at the positioning right now of Kire, it does seem that he's getting it spotted out by Memento. He's just trying to get a bit of deep vision down. He has decided to go for a very early sight stone. Hasn't even picked up his jungle item yet as well. Like, once again, being aggressed upon, and I like this playstyle from Nerf, the fact that they're always trying to get into the face of Epsilon, always trying to tell, hey look, we are going to be threatening in this bot lane, we're not just going to let you push us around, uh, and it's this aggressive style that is resulting in them not being as bullied as they typically would in mm. this 2v2. Cosgu, uh, as much as I see him like poking down Caps constantly, he's actually, it feels like he's falling further and further in terms of farm behind uh, Caps, or maybe just staying as much as he had uh, before, but uh, 10 CS behind. It's not the worst in the world. He's already gotten his tier as well, so he's getting to where he wants to be for mid-game. He's yeah. playing uh, hyper-aggressively. He's trying to get the poke down onto Caps mm. to force him back to then lose farm, but unfortunately he's losing farm himself to right. enable to right. set up that poke, which Caps obviously isn't really being phased by, so... That's where this CS discrepancy is being built up from. And now, seeing as we're at level 10 mark, Koski also has to be very mindful of the all-in potential from Caps because you, he doesn't have the cleanse, he doesn't have a barrier. So if Caps is able to get, uh, it's much easier to keep your orbs now in the on the field, so you can actually hit someone with all seven orbs. As Wicked, he's going to run into Satorius. Uh, I feel like Rumble is not winning this trade currently. Uh, I now feel like Rumble is winning this trade in top lane. Kire is going to try and uh, secure the deal. And Wicked is still being chased down, he's still being slow. There are so many slows, there's so much coming out from Satorius. Wicked, he's still running, but Kirei, ah, uh, flash out from Wicked will keep him alive, but burns the flash. But then it's fine. So Wicked just doing Chen things. Decided yep. to go for some early magic resistance against the Rumble, very smart. Mitigates a lot of that poke. And uh, just keeping an eye on the bottom lane, you can see the Memento positioning around this turret to try and set up a dive onto Epsilon, but Kairi, he read the play, had the vision, and was able to use the farm alarm to get back to the bottom half of the map to keep his bottom lane safe. So nice plays coming out so far from both teams, reacting very well, but Nerve do hold on to that gold lead, and we were discussing this earlier on, this is where they want to be, they're trying to use that skirmish power that Memento has, and they do scale very well with the Ezreal and with the Syndra, but if you just compare the two by two in terms of scaling, uh, Epsilon do still have a good late game composition. Caitlyn, you can never underestimate towards mm. the late game. Varus is still an AD carry whose poke is really unparalleled by any other champion in the game. And Satorius is Rumble. I mean, 
Rumble. He yeah. has so much late game damage, especially once he completes the Rylai's, it becomes so easy to stick onto your targets. And when you have this low mobility Syndra, she has to be very mindful of the fact that, uh, of this Rumble potential. So mm. Nerve, the, the saving grace for them is the fact that they do actually have a lot of kite, a lot of disengage. Um, and there's no real backline threat that Epsilon have that can just dive onto Caps, dive onto Upset and instantly nuke yeah. them down. Well, nukes a lot. He keeps aggressing onto Woolite, and they were trading a lot of their mana for uh, Woolite's health pool, but now it seems to have evened out in the bottom lane. Hasn't really resulted in a big uh, CS differential. If anything, Woolite is slightly ahead, but only by a little bit, and it's difficult to get more kills down at this point. Nukes not, it's not going to stop him from trying, though. Uh, Memento is still going into the bottom lane, and there's a glitch for Fisher looking for the spear, but Warlight, he was standing still, unfortunately, and Memento will jump after looking for the takedown. Centaurus is going to come out here for the punish. Look at that big equalizer. Wicked will come into this bottom lane, but there's no one else really dealing any damage. That upset will turn around and try and assist Wicked, but they were not reading from the same hymn sheet. Here comes Caps in from the mid lane, and with Chains of Corruption landing onto him, that uh, cleanse will not do enough for him with the long range poke, and Kira just battering down onto Caps. That will be a kill in return. Oh my word, that was so messy from both teams. It was a really good response coming out from the side of Nerve. The fact that they were able to very quickly get four members down to the bottom half of the map to prevent the collapse coming out from Epsilon. To then have Caps just give away his life as he's trying to set up a flank and just walks into the warm embrace of Epsilon. He was not expecting that collapse and they end up trading one kill over to Epsilon in the end. but. Again, so many small micro mistakes happen in that. Just keep your eyes initially on uh, Sanuk's lot. So here, he misses the initial Q. He then gets rid in. Trap misses coming out from Woolite. The spear misses onto Woolite, who's getting knocked up in a single target. Really good heal and shield, right? And then just keep your eye on the number of traps that Woolite is unable to lock Wicked with. There's one. There's two. Uh, and he was not able to land a single one onto Wicked to actually prevent him or to allow them to potentially get the cleanup. But fortunately, Caps, he's trying to set up a flank while the rest of his team is disengaging. He uses his cleanse very early on and that's not able to prevent the knockup coming out from Kyrie, which enables them to get the kill. So Epsilon coming out ahead even after there were so many small micro misplays coming out from both teams. However, the ult was good from Satorius, so at least they had that going for them. <laughs> um, and now Satorius. A lot of damage with those Electro Harpoons. And Kira is here as well, so he's actually good. What's actually going on right now with bottom lane? Wicked's pushing the lane, and the bottom lane is um, zoning them away. Uh, meanwhile, well, I took the top lane turret, and it's still zoning mission for Nerve. They did have the mini wave there, and Memento also comes down, so Tower's traded. Um, but I mean, well, I and Noxiac are going to keep on pushing, and no one's there to stop them. Yeah, but they don't have a massive minion wave, so Nerve should be able to respond in time to keep that turret alive. And uh, Epsilon, they're just trying to get a bit of damage down onto this turret, but I feel like the efforts may somewhat be in vain. It would have been better to just shove the wave underneath and then look to rotate around to the mid, and now they're potentially getting collapsed on. They are committing to this tier 2 turret in the top, but fortunately it actually drew Caps' attention, which left this mid lane wide open, so Epsilon... Maybe committing a little bit too hard, but then mm. Nerve, they just responded incorrectly and they give away a free objective. Really odd. And now, all that has resulted in basically no big lead, only 400 gold really to Epsilon. Wait a minute. Satoris is in the bot lane by himself, and uh, Memento and Upset will come in for this 1v2. And Sartorius does not have ultimate, but he is into oh overheat. He's doing so much damage to Upset. That will force the ultimate in from Wicked. Yeah, had to TP down there. Um, if Satorius yep. had ult, he could very well have won that, one v two, that yeah. fight, yeah. But, the, but that is, as you rightly say, going to force the ultimate out from Wicked. Now that Nerve have the numbers advantage, they're going to look to pick up this Matt and Drake. First dragon of the game, pretty late compared to a lot of other Drakes. Mm. But Epsilon, like they're going to try and contest this. They are a member down, but they do also have a lot of poke from the virus still available. They just have to be very wary of the Caps pick potential. Kira, he's still hovering around. He's looking to try and get a smite down, but not going to happen this time around. Caps is just completely rooted in place and taken out by a headshot in from Warline. Wicked goes deep and the team isn't quite there yet. And after losing Caps, I think Wicked's also going to be sacrificed to the gods. Double kill in for Warline. And uh, Koski will land the last 
little bit of poke on the way out. Two and zero for Epsilon. So that was actually a really good collapse overall from Epsilon to coordinate both the Caitlyn and the Varus to enable to get themselves the kill onto Caps. And I don't think Caps was expecting that sort of two-pronged attack whatsoever because he had no way to respond. He held onto his cleanse throughout because he thought he was fine. He didn't even realize that the ultimate had come out from Woolite, and that was actually what was able to give him the kill. And that actually turned the fight in Epsilon's favor because yeah. without that big damage dealer available for Nerve, that meant that Wicked was just left on the front lines to the Sharks and Whoop. that enabled Epsilon to get a two for zero. They did lose the Drake, but now they're likely just going to rotate bot and pick themselves up this tier one. Nuke Slot is hovering around, but the traps have already come out from Woolite and uh, Cosq is already hurting a lot right now. It just needs to be disengaged, but here's com here comes a TP from Wicked and Epsilon just going to engage on the front line. So Troyce is zoning away Wicked on the backside. Trap line is kind of keeping them at bay. Warline will be shadow dashed. And there's a great equalizer zoning all of Nerve away. Wicked is once again by himself. He just doesn't have the damage. Now Koski will chase that. So look for the chains of corruption. Doesn't get really onto the target he wants it to go down onto. And Kirei also can't quite get in range. So, so close. So many targets so low from Nerve. By Jove, that was a fantastic fight <laughs> coming out from Epsilon. I mean, truly. Great equalizer, but it looks like that the fight might not be over just yet as Kyrie. He's looking for a potential flank, but I think that he could be overcommitting a little bit, and I think that was smart. Kiro just trying to put a bit of pressure down onto the sidelines, force Nerve away from this turret, and because of the low health members of Nerve, they may very well not be able to keep this one alive, but Epsilon, they've decided, nope, we've got what we've come for, we don't want to overcommit, so let's just take the kill and back away. So let's just have a look at how this one all went down. Satorius, he initially overextended down the bottom lane. Um, this was actually very early on. You can actually see all the damage that Satorius was able to put down onto this. It forced the, the ultimate out from upset. And then this is how the dragon fight starts to play out. So Wicked, he's initially tanking up the dragon, which is smart. Caps takes quite a lot of damage early on. And then Caps, he's a little bit out of position here because he eats the chain, he doesn't cleanse. And then, ah, the trap comes ah. down from Caitlyn. That what resulted then in the headshot. And then Epsilon were just able to clean up the fight because without Caps available and Koskyu just zoning off the back line from the flank, that resulted in Wicked being left for dead. And uh, we saw a very similar thing happen once again when they come down for the bottom lane, they commit for this turret, they already have top lane pushing, there's nothing for them to take in the mid lane. Nerve, they want to try and keep this turret alive, but they're not able to respond quickly enough. And then you have the teleport flank coming out from Wicked. And just keep your eyes on what Satorius does. Kyrie, he's sitting on the front line, soaking up a lot of the damage. Satorius is trying to keep Wicked away as long as he can. And Nerve are too afraid to hard commit. They get the stun down onto Wallite. Here comes the equalizer. Completely denies the engage from Nerve. And there is no way to follow up on that lockdown onto Wallite. And I mean, Satorius really did just win that fight for them. Fantastic execution and overall great stuff from Epsilon. It was so close to picking up more kills as well for Epsilon there. But uh, three for five in total. Epsilon do have the slight advantage. And as long as they can keep CosQ at range, continuously poking, you can see him really put in some work. But you can see with the changes of Syndra, it's a lot easier to get more and more balls out on the field and just make it really difficult to get near her. But uh, so far, Nerf. The Execution has failed. All right, so this Syndra build, I hate, okay? <laughs> um, largely because I understand why he's gone for the Rod of Ages, and typically in a mid laner, you want to pick something like that for the scaling or because you need the health. Oh. And against the poke coming out from the virus, the extra health makes sense. But I would consider the armor to be a lot more valuable than the actual health provided. So. I feel like going for something like the Morello into the Zonyas would have added a lot more value because then if he gets rooted up by the Chain of Corruption, yep. he can just Zonyas in place and then the potential for the lockdown becomes significantly reduced. Um, it also means you have a pseudo second cleanse which can always be very beneficial as well. But the fact that he's decided to go for a Rod of Ages also delays his burst because you want as much ability power as you can. You want to reach that damage spike because you're Syndra. You're all about the one-shotting a single target. So you need things like the Void Staff completed. You need the Morello done. You maybe even want to get a Death Cap completed in there as soon as you can. And going for a Rod of Ages just makes getting to that point all the more longer, which really isn't the style of play that you want from a, uh, yeah. from a Syndra. Seems like always the thing that people do in Soku though, is just like, don't know what items to pick up, go Rod of Ages. Because it gives you like everything. Pulse. Yeah, it is. Because like Rod of Ages, um, I mean, uh, it's a great item, rather cost efficient. Yep, but very it just, cost efficient. But it takes so long to get to that point. And while he was able to get it relatively early on, it, it does now have 10 stacks. So I feel like 
if he'd just gone for something like the Morello and Tazanias into yeah. a Void Staff, he'd be a lot more threatening presence on the map right now. We shall see if it works out. Now he'll just go like 10 and 2. And then be like, well. Yeah, because this is exactly what happened when I called out the death cap on the Aurelian Soul, and yep. then that one came back to bite me in the butt. <laughs> uh, Literally just got a penta. Well, we shall see how things progress. As We're right into Seep now, City. We're into a team fight. We're going through the future. Timey Wimey. Uh, Kirei, he's looking for a knockup onto Wicked. What is even going right now? Memento goes down. What's going on? Cap's <laughs> backing away. I can hear people dying, but they're actually not. I'm hearing voices, Venius. Well, it looks like Memento did end up going down off the back of that fight. And now Epsilon, they have the numbers advantage. They also have Koscu at full health, full mana. He's going to be looking to get as much poke down as he can as they try and take down this tier 2 turret in the mid. All right, now they're sieging, but goodbye minion wave. Koscu continuously poking, do his vi doing virus things. Um, and now they'll just back away. Yeah, it looks like that the threat from Cinder was just too much for Epsilon to handle. And I think this is smart from Epsilon playing it safe simply because they do need the 2 0 here. You don't have to have a massive stomp to be able to take the victory. Just take your time. You have the lead right now. You're 3,000 gold ahead or just under 4,000 even. Your composition is scaling nicely. And what we've noticed is on a lot of these fights, Nerva really struggling to get onto the back line. Cosque has absolutely nothing to worry about because. Nerve have a lot of single target damage, but how are you dealing with this dual threat of both the Varus and the Caitlyn who are just mm. sitting at such a far range that have so much disengage with the Karma and the Rumble ultimate that, uh, to be honest, Nerve are just really struggling to figure out how to come out ahead in any of these fights. I mean, they've tried, right? They've tried having like the Wicked Frank with the TP and yep. try and get him in range, but then everyone gets owned away by like a Rumble ultimate or Epson or just like in a better position or Wicked is just by himself, which we've seen twice already, so. They've tried, but the execution has never quite been on point enough to make it really work for them. So, 26 minutes in, uh, Nerve needs to go back to the drawing board and think of something else, another way to uh, get back in here. Because what is for certain is poke will continue from uh, Coscu and Warlite as well will just be sieging up constantly. And that's exactly what Epson want to do. Dragon just went down, over to Epson as well. And they're in a pretty solid position. What's the next Dragon going to be? It's going to be Infernal! So. I see a fight. There we go. I wasn't lying to you. So we've had a lot of different drakes this game. Yep. Um, which is always good. Diversity is exactly what we want. Strategic. Only up to three, though. Uh, yes, that will only be three. So uh, given that we're also at 26 minutes, I do believe that this Inferno will be the final drake that can even spawn anyway. Yeah. Um, the, the, the big boy will be following that. Uh, afterwards, and uh, to be honest, the Infernal Drake, it will still be very beneficial for both teams, having that additional AP and AD, uh, you can't really scoff at, especially as we're heading now towards the late game. But now Nerve, they're looking to set up a siege. They have a lot of poke themselves with the Ezreal with the Nidalee. You also have the massive pick potential threat of Syndra that you always have to be wary of, but so far from both these teams, what we've seen is they are very bad at landing skull shots under stationary targets. So yep. maybe you don't want the Syndra to stun before you aim for the poke. Maybe. <laughs> uh, that was like three arrows in a row onto Nuke Slot, so we will have to back away. But that's because he was moving, right? So it's easy for Cos to line up the shots then. Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Six and three in this game. A lot of poking going on. This is really just a war of artillery. So no who's exactly uh, is helping him, eh, Pulse? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, it, it will eventually take down this tower. I'm just thinking of um, you know, a sport where you toss out the discs and you shoot them down with the rifle. I was going to say discus then. And I'm discus. Like, no, <laughs> that's, that's not the same that's thing. That's not the same thing. <laughs> Isn't it pigeon shooting or something? Uh, something Play like that, yeah. No, that's what this game is, basically. It's how I feel. <laughs> um, well, what is the I disc, feel, and then <laughs> 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 oh man! Well, what I feel right now is that both teams are just sort of struggling to really know what to do, and I can understand that Epsilon they're grouping up a lot, trying to get their poke down, which makes a lot of sense. They're using the trap line to sort of zone Nerve away from the turret, and then use Cosgu to just get the damage down to then force them back to enable them to then take it. But they're just too afraid to hard commit, and uh, it's understandable. There's always the threat of that Syndra, but. With the amount of poke and the amount of sustain, the fact that Koscu also has three items completed now, it should be so easy for Epsilon to just group up and force him. We've already seen how many times this flank engage from Nerve just won't work. But Epsilon, they're just, they're a little bit too hesitant. They don't want to force too much when they know how important taking, yeah. this, uh, taking this game is.
They're also like not under a lot of pressure because, as you mentioned earlier on, it's not, not like their late game scaling is horrific. Yeah. Like they can just keep on doing what they're doing and um, eventually just grind out nerve out because there's still like a bottom tower. There's still stuff for them to take fairly easily. What upset is gonna be the engage onto Kozku? He'll flash away. This is a response TP from Tutorials, but did not really want a TP in the middle of Nerve. I can't believe an Ezreal engage just resulted in Nerve taking mid tower. Well, they're gonna try and take mid turret. The Chain of Corruption does come out, and so does the stun on Takare. Yeah, he doesn't really want to be in here anymore, but now Satoris comes in as the cavalry. Look at the damage coming in from the Flames Bitter. Kotsky's raining down hell from the back lines. Caps responds with the Unleashed Power, but Warline turns up to the fight. He's going deep, he's leading the charge. Kirei is still there with a knockup onto Wicked. They find the kill once again. And I think. Left for dead three in this one. Oh, Cod's Q. Q. Nope, doesn't quite land. And now it's back to poking. Oh my words. So an Ezreal engage came out from Nerve. We were discussing how it was difficult for them to dive onto the back line. So Upset said, hey, I have a gap closer. Why don't I do it? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Upset, he tries to force the fight. But their execution was just a little bit off because Kosku had both of his summoners available. Then Nerf felt like they could commit to the turret, but unfortunately, no, please, no. Okay. they weren't able to get it. And now Epsilon, after not only getting a kill onto Wicked, but forcing Nerf back, they're able to get themselves the Baron, and things are looking so good for Epsilon right now. So, look at this. Flash, Arcane Shift, Ezreal, I mean... I just don't understand the logic, Paul. I, I really don't. I mean, if you're going to use anyone, make sure that it's Sanuks a lot, the one that's flashing in, making sure you land that crowd control to guarantee the CC. And at this point, Satoris just comes in for the flank, really good equalizer to get a lot of damage down. Uh, and then the thing is, for Epsilon, it's just their front line that's soaking up a lot of the damage. And if you just look at Nerve, they've taken way too much damage from the tanks to really then further commit once Epsilon, the rest of their carries join the fight. And Warlight on the backside, he's able to get the kill can't quite clean things up, but it doesn't matter because Epsilon, they've gotten so much damage down that they can just quickly turn around, go for the Baron, and pick that one up. So, yep. I mean, that was that was a challenger special. That's what that was. <laughs> it really was. And I wanted to say it could have gone worse if Caps hadn't landed that scatter the week onto everyone, but it went pretty badly <laughs> as it <laughs> is. They lost one like member, on yes, but then... a scale of one to ten <laughs> of how bad, like that was a, a seven. A solid seven. <laughs> it could have been a nine. It um, could <laughs> Clean ace then losing an inhib as well, but um, yeah, pretty bad. And uh, oop, where are we again? Upset, bottom lane farming. Yep. Um, Caps has been doing well with like the hand he's been dealt, right? Like he's he's been okay. I mean, he's zero two and zero, so I can't say he's been doing well, but he's been landing good stuns and good disengages. But it's just kind of like trying to stem the bleeding while his team is just hemorrhaging so hard. Memento, I, I don't even know why he pounced into them. Bottom lane, Wallace by himself. So um, luckily, Wallace will pull a Wallace and what is Nerve will take game, something. Pulse? I mean, Epsilon at this point are in such a great position. Kyrie is playing Rek'Sai. You can just put him in a side lane. You can use that ultimate to join the rest of your team. Have both Wallace and Kozku sit in the mid and start sieging up. Have Sartorius poke, uh, push your top lane out so that, again, you can take advantage of the Baron buff. And Wallace just giving away that kill is now just going to waste so much time that Epsilon can now do absolutely nothing about. They might even have to give away this Inferno Drake because they've lost so much DPS. I mean, gah, yeah. Pulse, gah. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. It's it's really odd because Epsilon, they just had the chance um, just to play this slow like they were doing up until a couple seconds ago. Um, and that'll just be Inferno Dragon now going over to Nerve. And really, I think this does represent why both of these two teams have consistently been at the bottom of the table. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, if there was any game to uh, really exemplify that, this one would be it. Yeah, because realistically, you have to get the 2-0 here to... to even get a chance of getting into fourth place and getting into playoffs. Yes. Um, and right now, I like it's it's just a coin flip for me. It was Epsilon clearly taking this until the misstep, and now it looks like Nerf have a shoe in the door once again. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe like this could be a 1-0, this could be a 2-0, but I think even looking further down the line, even if either of these two teams do get like a 2-0 here, going into playoffs, playoffs, um, against the other teams. I, I just don't think they'll perform very well. The thing is, I believe the best that Epsilon and Nerve could get themselves is um, fourth. So it would be against Misfits. And yeah. I mean, a performance like this will not, would not even, Misfits. When, it wouldn't even put a dent in the armor. Yeah. I mean, 
Because uh, we saw them against Millennium earlier today. So if if either one of these teams 2-0, then Misfits are just thinking, well, based on what we've seen so far, obviously yeah. a lot of teams change in playoffs. A lot of teams can surprise us. It, I mean, we, we made a lot of bold claims for the last Challenger playoffs. That's true. So, I mean, you never really know what could happen. Um, but still, right now, both these teams doing a lot of questionable things. And because they don't have the Baron, they're now really struggling to match up to the wave clear that Caps and Upset are providing between the two of them. They're not quite able to land the poke simply because Epsilon, they want to be moving up a little bit more so they can set a trap line down. And then that forces an area that Nerve are limited to playing around and that then makes it much easier to land the poke. But if you try to walk up and set these traps, if you try to walk up and land this poke, then Caps is always there waiting to get that pick and go for the instant nuke. And this is this is why we're having a very big back and forth, but it's also because neither of these teams properly know how to play around objectives and close out games. Yep. Just like we saw with Woolite randomly getting caught out in the bottom lane with the Baron. Bar. Pretty much, that is a very good summation of what we've seen so far. Epsilon still have the advantages in this game, and you can see them still trying to set up sieges, but they went bot lane and just couldn't achieve anything. Um, it just it, The thing that disappoints me the most is the fact that we have such experienced players here that just yeah. are playing the map so poorly. Um, Wallite should understand his own positioning on the map. He should be very aware of where his opponents are and where his teammates are and the advantages that he has. And instead, he's just making foolish mistakes that are just allowing his opponents to come back into the game. And Wicked, to be fair to him, he has been... In terms of his setup and his plays, he's been doing his job for the most part. Yeah. But he's not respecting the fact that there is a lot of disengage available for Epsilon. There are a lot of ways to stop the rest of his team from following up. And Nerve aren't really able to find the opportunities to give them a solid lead over this game. Yeah. And we will even say coming into the game as well, Will like has kind of gone back to his old self more and more. And I think this game has just kind of proved that. Because um, now he's in the top lane and was almost by himself again, almost. Um, and he's just constantly in these side lanes and not fully respecting what Nerve can do. He has four items. Like, why do you need more farm? You're at a good point right now. This is... But the team doesn't want to commit, Vedius. <laughs> ah. Yeah, pretty much. Deidre, put the kettle on. This is going to be a <laughs> We're long We're going to be here for a while. <laughs> Yeah, because the problem is Caps as well. Even if he gets like a pick, he doesn't have the burst. I don't really think to burst down anyone other than Wallite, I guess. Like, most people have life steal. All right, so I mean, never going to be in range. We've been talking about the negatives a lot. Let's talk about some of the cool stuff. Simply because <laughs> it wasn't even like the positives. Let's yeah, look let's at the look cool at some stuff. Some of the cool stuff, right? So Noxiac right. has picked up the Talisman of Ascension, which is not only the super fast stuff, um, because it gives you the. Uh, it makes you run really fast, which synergizes great with Karma's Kid overall, but now that item also gives you cooldown reduction, uh, or more cooldown reduction than it did before, which is always super great. And on top of that, they've also picked the Mikals, which now increases your healing and shielding, which yep. is exactly what Karma does. So you were talking earlier on how Karma is a great pick right now, sure. just in general. As, uh, ooh, here comes the ult. Here comes the command ult to nukes a lot. There's the Shadow to Montomba, but he's going to drop before that. Oh, maybe not. Jumps towards uh, Upset. Follows up with the Equalizer. And Wicked again is in the middle of Epsilon. They lose Braum. Can they do any more? Key rate's dropping low. Caps is looking for someone to burst down. He's already used Unleashed Power. And after all that... Basically, everyone using everything all at the same time. Only Nuxalot dies, and Nerva getting poked off to the side while Epsilon are pushing down mid. Oh, man. I mean, that was a very close fight between both the teams, and to be honest, Caps was actually in a great position to be able to turn that fight in his favor. The positioning that he had was just so good, and unfortunately, he ended up using all of his damage onto the wrong target, and now uh. Wicked. <laughs> he, oh, my word. <laughs> he just, like, comes in and is like, oh, there's no one here. Uh, I'm coming in, I'm gonna make a play, and oh, no one's oh. here. Damn, did I miss the tea party? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Did you book a reservation, sir? <laughs> because I feel like you missed your opportunity. Uh. As, uh, wicked, he got the ult off, and... I mean, <laughs> That's why you always book in advance. Oh, man. Oh, Deirdre. <laughs> I hope she's got that tea ready, because we're yeah. gonna need it after this game. Still in the kettle, I think. Okay, right, let's so let's just have a proper look as to how this one broke down. All right. Look at the position from Koski. Initiates onto Sunoops a lot, which is not the ideal target. And they're not even that quickly able to burst him down. But look at the positioning of Caps. It was so good from him. He just had to be more patient. He felt like he had to get the burst down. He uses it all into Satorius, who 
at this point just has too much health for you to be able to one shot him caps and because he also doesn't have the void staff he just doesn't quite have the damage yeah fortunately for him uh, that does mean that they just they weren't able to get the damage that they need upset in terms of poke is never going to be able to match the poke pressure of Koski, who was able to get himself a kill in that fight but it doesn't result in any net objectives other than the fact that they got Wicked's TP. So he now no longer has that objective. He still, um, sorry, he no longer has that summoner spell. Yeah. He still has the ult though. But we can see how much damage Epsilon are actually able to do once they lock that single target down. Uh, the chain of corruption into the trap, then into a full on equalizer. As long as you also can zone away the rest of the team, he just does an insane amount of damage. And now Epsilon could be looking to set up a two man Baron. Uh, yeah. To be honest, there's no vision coming out from Nerve. They have no idea that this is happening. It's dying pretty quickly as well. I mean, now Nerve are going towards the Baron, but I think it's already a little too late. It's already down to a third HP. Warlight is still hamming away at it. It's a nice down on to Warlight, but he's going to light still a lot of it back up. Wicked comes into this fight, and they probably will look for a fight here, but great knock up out from Kira will stop the Shadow Dash. So Torres will cut off the fight using Equalizer. Caps is waiting over the wall, looking for the chance to strike, but he's not gonna pull the trigger. So Torres is slow, Wicked will find the kill. Nuke Slot is trying to back up Upset. Two fast kills over to Epsilon, one and we turn on to Sartorius. Oh, Caps, why? <laughs> Caps was again in such a good position yep. to do so much work. I mean, when we get the replay, it'll be much easier to illustrate how his positioning could have turned that fight in his favor. But that was just so awful from Caps because. Right, and we'll, Tell me we'll how talk, you really we'll feel, talk more about it when we actually get the replay. But overall, Epsilon, they get themselves the Baron, they get themselves two kills, they only lose to Taurus in return. They might be going for another Flank engage. Hype, the flash, the knockup onto Caps, and he'll have to use the flash defensively this time. Returns with the unleashed power, but the shielding from Noxia will keep him alive. Somehow Caps is still alive as well. Noxiac's dropping low, but he'll, uh, he'll get out. So no casualties from that. That was actually a really good exhaust coming out from Noxiac to mitigate a lot of the burst coming out from Caps as well. And to be honest, the fact that Caps is then forced to use his flash could come to hurt him later on. But now, because he's been forced back, because Wicked doesn't have teleport, he also doesn't have his ultimate, and there is no vision on the map for this Elder Drake. Epsilon could very well pick up this objective too. Yeah, it's down to uh, around half right now. And will I? He's so strong. He's actually full item build. It's 41 minutes in right now. Will I? We'll take his beer, but we'll just get all the health back. Nuke slot. He's trying to get in range here. Uh, so Torius off to the side. It's going to be close onto this Elder Dragon, but Epsilon have stopped hitting it. And Kira is trying to find someone to knock up, but only really finds Wicked right now. Memento, he's still dancing in the pit, and Epsilon just realized he was there and instantly pop him. That's the Dragon going over to Epsilon. Elder Dragon to them, plus their Baron buff. And surely at this point, that is, they can now pull the trigger and try and close out the game. Memento, I hope you took a picture of that dragon because it lasted, that's going to last much longer than you did in that fight <laughs> after just giving away such an easy kill over to the side of Epsilon. You didn't have your flash, you weren't able to use your Zonyas. The rest of your team could not provide the support that you needed. And now Epsilon with that Elder Drake are just going to walk straight into the base of Nerve and pick themselves up an even bigger advantage. Yeah, Caps had to go back to base and uh... Epsilon, they still had a minion wave, but didn't really want to commit. There's a big one in the bottom lane they'll want to uh, soak up. And this game will continue for a little bit longer, or maybe not. They'll push up the top turret as well, but it doesn't really look like Epsilon are looking to um, deal a fatal blow and kill the Nexus. They are just going to back away for now. So this, um, yeah, Epsilon have managed to get ahead finally in this game. It's been a game of inches really from, from both Epsilon, teams. Epsilon have always been ahead. They just have done nothing with their lead. I yeah. mean, they, they've been very mindful. Look at this, here comes another upset engage. Oh, uh, wicked. He's gonna come in here and he doesn't really get onto anyone. So no, we'll have to back away and wait for the ultimate again. But the flank from Satoris could be good. And Kirei gets a knock up on the upset and Memento. There's an equalizer onto a couple targets. Koskyu finds a kill onto Ezreal. Everyone's now backing away onto Nerve. Uh, Zonia's Alglass will keep Memento alive. Nukes a lot, trying to zone away for Caps as well, but he gets oh destroyed by Warlight. Welcome to late game, Caitlyn. And he is going to town onto everyone here. This has been a really bizarre game, Vedius, but it's finally over. Epsilon onto these two Nexus turrets. Memento and Nukes a lot, there's nothing they can do. Epsilon just hit the damn tower. There we go. And 43 minutes in, Epsilon will go after these kills. And after these kills, they will go onto the Nexus and will eventually find the first game of this series after they've 
hit them on the spawn pad. Okay, Nexus goes down. Epson take game one. Well, you know, in a situation like that where the game has gone on for so long and it's been so frustrating that I'm surprised you wouldn't just kill the Nexus and make it end. I mean, it was a, a slow, clean win for Epsilon. To be fair, Epsilon made very few mistakes Yeah. overall. There were a lot of opportunities for Nerve to capitalize on, which they did not. Uh -huh. In particular, Caps, uh, I know we're not going to be able to have the replay available of that fight, but the big thing is, for Caps in particular, he... I mean, everyone could see where he was stood. He was stood behind the wall, and in, in theory, you'd think, I know what he's trying to do. He's yeah. keeping out of sight. He That means that he knows if his present isn't seen, he can land the pick. Mm -hmm. Flash over the wall, go for the insta-kill. He lands the stun onto yep. two members. One of them has the exhaust, which means that as long as they're stunned up, the uh -huh. chances of the damage being reduced is gone. He could have flashed over the wall, got the insta-kill onto Cos Q, yep. and that could have suddenly swung the fight wide open. He did not do that. Indeed. Then another opportunity came where Satorius is retreating up through the river. Mm -hmm. There are the lots Baron, of members yeah. all grouped up after they take the Baron. He could have flashed over the wall, got a multi-man stun off, and he could have killed so many people. Yep. And instead he didn't. He didn't do anything. And the better way to play that, in my opinion, was to actually walk up to the river, <laughs> completely zone them away from the rest of the fight, make it a three versus five, deny the Baron from the vast majority of the members of Epsilon, yep. and then you regain so much control of the map. You're going to get all these shutdowns, you're going to get more kills into your carries, yep. you're going to get so much experience because the level differential, things would have been great. But mm -hmm. because he decided to stand behind the wall and watch the fight as a tourist, yeah. he decided <laughs> to just... It was just... It was not an impressive Syndra for me. Mm -hmm. There were there were many opportunities for him to capitalize on, and he did not take advantage of any of them. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, that is a real shame because... Uh, I mean, they were they were just. Fortunately for Nerve, Warlight like, then gave them an opportunity back, and he was like, yep. "Yo, Caps, are you having a rough time here? I'm gonna <laughs> give you my Baron." One more chance. Uh, <laughs> but still, I mean, that was that was messy. Okay. That was messy. Well, after that long rant, that was basically. If you've just joined us now, that was a summation of the entire game, pretty much. But that had more serious implications for um, specifically Nerve because now that Epson have won, Nerve have no chance to make playoffs. So they have to wait until next season if they want to try and get back into LCS and uh, keep those hopes alive. And now all that Nerve can do is try and crush the dreams of Epson because if they win here, then Epson also can't make it into playoffs. So yep. next game is dream crushing time. So. Uh, so Epsilon so far have never won a 2-0. So mm. this is their one opportunity to break that bad record. I mean, record. if they're going to do it at any time, now would be the time to do yes, it. And it also against a weakened opponent and also at the bottom of the table. This is the time to try and do it. So it's, uh, yeah, if they play another game like that where they make very few mistakes, okay, it can be frustrating at times uh, as the team and also as viewers and also as casters. But if that's the way you need to win and the way you need to get into playoffs, just do it. You know? I mean, to be fair, if Nerva playing like this, then this should be a clean 2-0 for Epsilon yeah. because Epsilon do seem right now to be the better team, better team, but only by a small margin. Yeah. <laughs> but consistently, that's that's what we've found. Yes. Kind of. Koski, to be fair, was very impressive on that virus. His positioning, yeah. his ultimates overall I th yeah, were I think very, he was very the best good. Part of that team. Um, and then... Uh, just overall impressive stuff for some of the players, but for Epsilon. I get the feeling that someone wants us to go to break, <laughs> so Epsilon currently leading the series 1-0. We'll see if they can make it that clean sweep and make it into playoffs, or if they can bring it back and crush some dreams. We'll be back after the break.